Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hexjibber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on file properties in Flash. When you open Flash CS5, you'll get a splash screen like this and you'll get lots of options over the type of new document that you can create. There's lots of options down here, but there's also lots of templates here. I've created some of my own. You can see I've got one called Andy Animation and one called Books. So let's take a look at some of the ones that come with Flash. If we click on Advertising, you can see that we've got lots of different options they generally start with the resolution of the file, so 120 by 240 or 120 by 60, and it previews them here. So this is 366 by 280, that's a sort of banner ad shape. I've created my own animation templates. One is for full HD, that's 1080p. That's 1920 by 1080 and I'm doing it at 25 frames a second. 25 frames a second is the frame rate you use in Europe, so it's what's called a PAL frame rate. 24 frames a second is the frame rate you'll find on Blu-ray for films shot on 35mm because they run at 24 frames a second. American TVs run at 29.97 frames per second. That's the NTSC frame rate. So because I live in England, I use 25 frames a second because that's a European frame rate designed for European TVs. Here I've got 720p, that's a resolution of 1280 by 720. Uh, that's the smaller version of HD. So these two presets are very important for me because I tend to make a lot of content for video, so for DVD and Blu-ray. Down here I've got PAL, uh, standard definition. At 25 frames a second. You can see that's a 4x3 old school TV size. But down here I've got standard definition widescreen. So my PAL SD is running at 768 by 576 um, That's the square pixel resolution of PAL standard definition. If that's starting to boggle your mind, don't worry. <laughs> I tend to work in 720 or 1080 if you're making content for video. Down here, uh, we've got some media playback options. Here it's got presets for HDTV, 1080 and 720, but they're running in the American standard of 29.97, and it's got standards for PAL and Wide PAL, which I've adapted for my own uses. So I'd use these media playback options if you're new to Flash and you want a really good template for creating content for video. So you've got 1080, 720, NTSC wide, PAL wide, PAL 4x3, NTSC 4x3, etc, etc. And you've got more for presentations and you've got some more sample files there. I'm going to choose one of mine, so I'm going to choose 720p at 25 frames a second. I'm going to fit it in the window. If I click on my properties up here, you can see this tells me lots of information about my document. It's called Untitled 7. I'm using Flash Player 10 and Action Script 3. These options here, Profile, that brings up the publishing settings, which I've gone over in my lesson on exporting. Down here in properties, we've got our frames per second or our frame rate, which we can change. And we've also got our frame size or document properties. So if I edit that, I can change the width and height of my animation. I can choose whether to use pixels uh, or inches, etc. for my ruler, which I've got up here. This is really good for using guides with and telling you how much space you've used up. And this is also where you alter the background color. If I wanted to change the background color of my document, I could change it to blue click OK, my background will turn blue. It's important to note that most programs when you export an SWF will just interpret this blue or white or black as 
an alpha channel so it will just register it as invisible so really if you want to have a black background or a green background you're best off drawing say a green rectangle that's the size of your stage and putting that in a background layer that's a surefire way of ensuring that that background will definitely show up in your final export so one piece of advice I give you is make sure that these properties your frame rate and your size are set correctly at the beginning of a project if you change the frame rate halfway through your animation you're likely to have to redo it all because a lot of the timings that you set up will change and your animation just won't look right equally if you end up changing the size of your animation halfway through then all of your content's going to be in the wrong place and you have to go through every single one of your keyframes changing it all so if you want to make your life easy make sure that you get your file properties correct at the beginning of your project so that you're not having to change them later on so that's file properties have a go yourself and i'll see you in the next lesson hi if you enjoyed this lesson why not consider checking out the hextuber coloring and activity book on my website hextuber.com it's suitable for kids and adults alike and you can get it from amazon play.com and wh smiths cheers <laughs>